Hi there guys, got a video here for you today on an FTP900 and in this one we're going to be rebuilding the regulator. So this particular rifle isn't one of mine, a good friend of ours has just bought it. Although unfortunately, every time he goes to fill it up, air just leaks out the atmospheric breathe hole in the side of the regulator. So he's asked me to take a quick look at the regulator and see if I can rebuild it for him. And that's what we're going to be doing in this video. Before we get started on that though, there are just two things that I want to mention very briefly. The first is that Air Max Arms are going to be starting a UK tour on the 22nd of May. Now the tour itself starts at around 2pm at the Crawley Surplus store. They're going to be bringing a van full of rifles, and you're going to be able to see the entire Air Max range. So if you're interested in an Air Max rifle, they're probably going to be doing some deals. You'll be able to get all the accessories, that sort of thing. So if you're looking for one of those, it starts on the 22nd of May at 2pm at the Crawley Surplus Store. The second thing that I want to mention is that on the 27th of May, Pete's Airgun Farm are going to be hosting a boot sale. So pause the video and read the little leaflet there if you're interested in that. The boot sale itself is normally a really good little event. There's lots of people show up from all over the UK. And if you're looking to buy something or you've got something to sell, it's a really nice little event and it's well worth checking out. With that all said and done though, we can begin on the rifle itself. The first thing to do would be to degas the rifle, although that's already done as the rifle itself won't hold air. The gauge on the end of the cylinder is reading zero and if we dry fire the rifle, nothing comes out the barrel. We know it's nice and safe to proceed, so we're going to be taking the stock off next. And that's done by loosening this screw here using a 3mm Allen key. Do the same on the other side. As you remove the screws, just make sure that these little stock ferrules don't get lost as you take the screws out. And then the last thing to do is remove the one on the bottom, and that's done using a 4mm Allen key. With those bolts removed, we can now gently lift up the stock like so, and stick this nice and safely over to one side. Next thing we'll do is remove the stripper. To remove the stripper, we need to remove this grub screw in the end using a two millimeter Allen key. With that done, we can slide the stripper off the end of the barrel. With that done, next thing we're gonna do is remove the barrel band, and that's done by flipping the rifle up and removing this screw using a two and a half mil Allen key. With that done, you can just pull the barrel band off from the rifle. Now from the factory, this should have pins pressed through these holes here. Although on this rifle, they have been removed and they aren't fitted on this rifle. I'm not quite sure why they've been removed, but they're not fitted. And if I'm honest, if we have a look around the gun, there are a few marks and bumps and scratches over the whole thing. But next thing we can do is unscrew the cylinder. And to do that, you just flip the rifle up and then nice and carefully unscrew the cylinder. Now on this rifle, it wasn't too bad to remove, but on some of them, they are done up awfully tight. So you may need to remove the barrel to get you a little bit better grip on the cylinder itself. As you take the cylinder out, just make sure that the valve return spring, this O-ring here and the valve itself don't get lost. So we're just going to stick the body of the rifle off to one side. Next thing we'll do is remove this end here, which is the regulator housing. Now there's a few different ways you can do this. The way I'm going to do it is by using this tool here. Now this is a homemade tool and that just fits in the end like so. Then with the use of an 18 millimeter spanner, you can just come across these flats here, then undo the end. Now I won't lie to you, I did have to pre-loosen this off camera. The way I did that was wrapping some nice protective rubber around the outside of the cylinder, then clamping that very lightly in the vise. Once the cylinder was secured in the vise, it was nice and easy to use the tool and just loosen it. Now, if you didn't have a hex key tool like this one here, which fitted in the end of the regulator housing, the other way you could remove this is via the use of some snap ring pliers getting them in the end like so, then loosening the unit from the cylinder. With the regulator housing removed from the cylinder, we can start disassembling it. On this side, we have the adjuster screw end, and on this side, we have the piston end. So from the factory, the adjuster screw side is held in via the use of some Loctite. So you're gonna to need to break that. 
I've done it off camera and I did that by just simply loosening it, tightening it and just working the adjuster screw loose from the regulator housing. I've already pre-loosened and removed the Loctite just off camera to make the disassembly procedure a little easier. Once we've got the tool in the end there, we can unscrew the adjuster screw. The other thing that I'll mention at this stage is if you don't have a reg tester or don't have any way to test the reg pressure before you take the regulator apart, just make sure to measure the distance between the adjuster screw top and the top of the housing. That way, when you rebuild the regulator, you can set it back to where it was set from the factory. With that done, we can remove the piston from the regulator housing, and that's simply done by removing this snap ring in the base here. So we're going to be coming through with some snap ring pliers, removing the snap ring from the bottom there, and then via the use of a small cotton bud or something similar, we're just going to press the piston out from the housing. As you do this, be careful that the Belleville washers don't become dislodged from the piston. So if you take a look at the piston there, I think you can see what exactly the problem is with the regulator. If we look at the O-ring at the back here, it's all damaged and destroyed, as is the one on the front. And if we look at the piss or the Belleville washers there, they're covered in sort of a gritty grease of some kind. I'm not quite sure what that is, but it's all gritty and fairly horrible. So we're going to be cleaning that up. So I'm going to get all the old O-rings removed and all the parts cleaned up very quickly off camera. Then I'll bring you back and we'll reassemble the regulator. Right then, and here is the regulator and the regulator components all cleaned up just quickly off camera. So we've removed all the old grease, all the old nastiness that was inside, and we've also replaced all the O-rings off camera. So this is this side here. And then we have the piston with the Belleville stack, like so. So the Bellevilles are cupped in pairs, and on this rifle there's 12 washers in 6 pairs. The only thing that I will mention when you reassemble this, just make sure that you put your Belleville washers on before the actual O-ring goes on. If you put the O-ring on first, it's a little difficult to get the Belleville washers over the O-ring and you risk damaging the O-ring itself. So just bear that in mind as you rebuild the rig. The other thing that I'm going to do very quickly off to the side is just put some dry loop over these Belleville washers here. The Belleville washers themselves were cleaned off, all the old grease was removed, then a very, very, very thin layer of oil was just placed over the Belleville washers to stop them from going rusty. I don't like grease on my Belleville washers, I always put a small amount of dry lube on them. And this stuff here is just a small amount of molly powder, so it's powderized, and you just sprinkled it over the Belleville washers. That's what I like to do with my ones, although you can do whatever you want with yours. Next thing we'll do is add a small amount of silicone grease to the top and bottom o-ring of the rig piston. These two pieces here, just a small amount will do us. Then we'll get that installed in the housing itself. So the regulator piston goes in from this end. Push that in nice and gently. Then as we push it through, we're going to watch in this small hole here and try and get the piston itself lined up with the hole. There we have it. Once it's found its hole, we'll just gently push it in, making sure not to pinch the O-ring as that goes in. And there we have it. The piston itself is installed in the housing. Next thing we'll do is add the snap ring to the back of that. I'm going to do that by the use of our snap ring pliers. So these ones here. Put that in like so. And then use an allen key or something similar just to push the snap ring into its groove. And there we have it. Next we'll install the adjuster, and to do that we're going to put a small amount of silicon grease around these two O-rings here. And then get that installed in the unit like so. Then I'm going to get that screwed in with my little tool. And get it in screwed in so far, then I'm going to set the regulator, or set the piston position, to what we measured earlier. Or roughly what we measured earlier, which was 3.3. And there we have it. So we've set it to 3.3 and that should hopefully get us around 100 bar on the reg pressure. Next we'll get the housing installed into the tube. To do that we add a small amount of silicon grease to this external o-ring here. 
and then we'll get that screwed into the cylinder. Now, I haven't got a dedicated reg tester for this rifle, but what I have done is come up with a way of testing the reg pressure without a reg tester. What we've got is this little piece here. So this is a piece I made off camera. And what this allows us to do is push that in there like so. And then as this thread here is the same as a DIN on a bottle, we can now screw this into a bottle and then pressurize the cylinder. So what I've got here is just a five liter bottle. We'll stick that on its side like so, and then screw in our cylinder to the end of the bottle. Get that done up nice and tight. And now what we're gonna do is use a second bottle to fill the cylinder and then check the reg pressure on this gauge here. Now this is nice and easy to do and it allows us to test the reg pressure without having to make anything. And if we look at the gauge on the top of the bottle there, we see that the reg pressure is set at about 105 bar. Now that's perfectly fine. The rifles from the factory are set about 100 and after a little bit of shooting, I expect the reg pressure to drop ever so slightly. With the cylinder taken off the tester, it's time to get it reinstalled into the rifle. First thing we'll do is reinstall the valve and the valve return spring. So the valve itself just goes into the valve housing in the front of the rifle, which is this hole here. Just get that pushed in and then pushed home. What we're gonna do at this stage is cock the rifle and that will allow the valve to go fully home and also take the hammer from pressing on the valve pin. Next thing we'll do is take this spring here, which is our valve return spring, and get that hooked over the valve itself, like so. Next thing we'll do is take this O-ring here, add a small amount of silicon grease to it, and then get that put over the housing. Then we can take our cylinder and get that screwed onto the front there. Getting that done up nice and tight. Next thing we'll do is bring back our barrel band and put a small amount of silicon grease over the two O-rings there. So just in that hole there, small amount will do us. Then we can slide that over the barrel. Get pushed nice and carefully into place. Then what you do at this stage is line everything up and get your two pins pushed into these two holes here. But as this rifle isn't fitted with these pins, we're just going to get everything lined up and then reinstall the small screw in the bottom. Getting that done up nice and tight with a two and a half mil Allen key. Next, we'll take the front half of the shroud, get that slid over the barrel like so, and then we'll bring back our stripper and get that installed onto the front of the barrel. Next up, we'll get the small securing screw installed into the stripper, which is this one here. Now this one is a non-original one. The original ones were stainless steel, but the original has been lost, so we've left with this one here. And before we get this installed into this hole here, just look down and make sure the stripper itself is lined up with the dimple on the barrel. Once we're happy, we can get that screwed in using a 2mm Allen key. With that done, the next thing we'll do is get the rifle repressurized. So we've left the rifle cocked, so if we touch the trigger now, it will go off, but that's on purpose as we may need to cock the rifle in order to fill it from empty. So we'll leave it cocked for now and I'll get this filled up. Right then, and with a bit of air in the rifle, as you can see there, we've got about 150 bar of air in the rifle. It's no longer leaking straight to atmosphere, so the regulator has been fixed. We've also stuck the rifle over the chronograph, and it's chronoing nicely, and it's roughly at the same power. If you needed to adjust the power at all, it's quite simple to do. We have a Venturi adjustment on this side here. It's covered over with a small screw, but if you needed to remove that, you could use a two millimeter Allen key to remove this top cap cover screw, and then use a 1.5 mil Allen key to adjust the Venturi inside. It is a transfer port adjustment, so it blocks and unblocks the transfer port, and that's what you use to get your desired power. On this side of the rifle, it's known as the fine tune side, and it's left user adjustable to adjust the feet per second that you need. 
and on this side this is the rough adjustment which is covered over by the use of an anti-tamper. So to get the rifle back in the stock we'll bring it back over, lift the block up and gently feed it into the stock. Next we'll put the one in the bottom in first and that's done using a 4mm allen key. Then we'll stick the two in the side. They're installed with a 3mm allen key. And there we have it, there's the rifle fully built back up and now working. With that said, that's going to about do it for this one guys, so thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.